Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the Everton Women's Show. I'm happy to say I am joined by Everton's Megan Finnegan. Well, you all right? Yeah, good. Big game on Saturday against Manchester City down at Walton Hall Park. Um, before we talk about that, uh, what, what's it been like this season so far for you? Yeah, I think it's been, I describe it as steady, you know, I think we've we've done well in certain games, but there's still definitely a lot of work to be done. But I feel like the emotions, you know, within the squad are, are all positive, you know, because mm. I feel like everyone can see that we're building something. Um, so, yeah, just give us time and I'm, I'm sure we'll be there. Yeah, three wins, three defeats. Yeah. But one of those wins was at Anfield, where you obviously scored the first goal. Yeah. Uh, it was just it, it was just an amazing night because Everton don't win there that often. <laughs> certainly the men's team do. I think you've won twice there though yeah. in the last few years, haven't you? So I mean, what was that occasion like? I think there was twenty seven thousand there. There was a full away end, which I think made it really special. Yeah. And obviously, you scored at the cop end, which must have been sweet. Yeah, as you say, I think couldn't really have uh, have wrote it better. Um, wasn't expecting that many fans, so it was, it was good to have so many turn up and, like you say, to have our packed out away end mm. and go over and celebrate with them at the end was, was special. And I, always, I, I never score that much, <laughs> so I always love it. But, um, yeah, I think you could tell by my reaction how much that one meant, yeah. Is that something that's changed in the last couple of years? Because, obviously, you're at Walton Hall Park now. It's your, it's your ground. Yeah. You know, you play there every week. And, obviously, I think you, I think you played one game before COVID. And then went, went but yeah. but it, from what I'm seeing on like you know obviously not from the outside but just looking in you're starting to get a real fan base now. It's not just yeah you know it's not just people who may have fallen into the game because you're an Ever you're an Everton team, but yeah. you're really getting a hardcore following now. Where pro you know you got a proper fan base that are coming every week and going to away games because one of the things I noticed obviously last week was when the Spurs game got called off, yeah. how many Everton fans were really upset yeah. by it because they travelled all that way. So yeah. how, how how important has that been in the last year or so? Yeah, it's massive and I think, you know, it started last season, which is so important because mm. last season was a really hard year, but we still had, you know, that core group of fans who would come and support us. But, but this year, you know, virtually every game that we've played at Walton Hall has, has been a sellout. So for us, as players, you know, it's just amazing because we know that it's going to be a difficult place for teams to come, mm. and we know that no matter what, you know, we've got we've got the fans backing us as well. Is that being important to sort of craft your own identity? Because again, separating yourself from the men's game with being, you know, it being the women's game and how how much that's involved, having that little bit of an identity of having your own ground as well as that, yeah. is that being a big important partner. Yeah, definitely, and I think the. The investment that the club's put into that ground, you know, it's it's unreal. The the surface itself is is, is so good, one of the, one of the best in the league. And like you say, that's it's special for us because that is our pitch, our mm. home. Um, and yeah, like you say, separates us from the men's a little bit. Though. Were you fuming last week when the under twenty ones were playing on it? Like I did, yeah. <laughs> I said to somebody, this better not be a permanent fix and they better not quit it up before our game against City. I know, because we've been hearing some horror stories. You know, I spoke to, uh, when we did our show last week, Kira came in and we were talking about how uh, the Luton game got called off two minutes before it was supposed to kick off oh, because, really? because the men were training on the pitch the next day and it was on the same day that your game was called off against oh, Spurs. Really? And I just thought, you know, for how far the game's come, yeah. for things like that, that that's a disgrace. And for yeah. you to have your home, your own pitch, yeah. I think I think there's obviously we've got one. Chelsea, I think, have got their own one, and yeah. there's there's a few more starting to pop up. But yeah. that that to me shows where, as a club, we we seem to be going and giving having our own stadium. Yeah, like you say, I think we're very fortunate that obviously Everton have done that for us. But that's where the women's game is is still got to go because mm. you know. I, I, we were all disappointed that the Spurs game got yeah. cancelled because that, that shouldn't be happening. Um, you know, clubs should be playing at, at stadiums where you know the English weather isn't gonna yeah. isn't gonna <laughs> stop it. And we all know that it's not very nice. But you know, the the pitches that we're playing on they should be good enough. Yeah. Um, so that's disappointing, and that's where the women's game, you know, the gap kind of has to be. Um, you know, lesson in that sense. Yeah, I mean, obviously, in the last twelve months, you've had a lot of changes at the club. We all know, um, but how's it settled down now with with obviously the the new manager Brian Sorensen? Yeah, he's been a, a breath of fresh air. To be honest, he's been really, you know, 
welcoming and I think he's he's such a calm, calm guy. You know, if you ever speak to him, sometimes he's almost too calm. <laughs> um, but, you know, he's got a clear identity, which is, is good because I think that's what we lacked last season. Mm. Um, we all know the way that he wants to play. And he's brought in some, like, really, really good players, but also lovely girls. So mm. I think the the team morale this year is a lot is a lot better as well. Excellent. It, it does seem to be getting improved. I mean, you know, obviously last season was was there was a lot of changes. Yeah. Uh, a lot of, it felt like there was a lot of similarities between <laughs> what was going on the men's team and the wen women's team. But it's great that it's settled down. And obviously, coming off the back of what we saw in the summer with the Lionesses winning the Euros, I mean, how how important do you think that's that's been for the game so far this season? Yeah, it was massive, and I think. That's part of the reason why we're we're getting you know sellout crowds. Obviously, because we're doing well as a team, yeah. but there's a there's a greater interest in women's football, which is great. And I, I said on the back of that, you know, the most important thing to build on was that we got you know bums on seats. Mm. You know, it's great that the games are being televised, but yeah. we still want to make sure that Walton Hall sold out every yeah. week, which we are doing right now. Yeah. So you know, we're obviously doing something right as a club and women's football in general, but. It was great. Um, it was great to watch that in the summer, and uh, I was I was buzzing for the girls. You still got aspirations because you play for England at all the junior levels. Yeah. And obviously, we've seen. I think uh, Jess Park has been in the squad. Gabby George has been in the squad as well yeah. recently. You still got aspirations to to try and get in that England. <laughs> I know it's going to be tough. Yeah. But... They, look, they'll always be a part of me. I've, probably until the day I retire. Um, that's always was my my long term ambition, and I'd love to be able to play international football, mm. uh, senior international football. But right now, my my focus is at Everton, um, playing week in week out for them and doing well, and whatever comes with that will come. Yeah. But you know, it's been great to see the girls, um, Gabby and Jess, you know, go away, and I think Jess was on the pitch for about one minute after her debut and she got a goal. So, um, yeah, we, we've got a lot of internationals yeah. within the squad, um, which is why it's such a competitive squad. Yeah, I was going to say, it's good to see, obviously it's good to see players from Everton being involved and obviously disappointing that Gabby not, never got the opportunity, but yeah. she's around it. And obviously we've seen in the summer as well, a lot of Everton players playing in, in the Euros. Um, yeah. that, that that must be great for the squad as well to see to see so many internationals. Yeah, definitely. It's you know every time the inter international break comes around, it's it's quite hard to keep up with you know everyone that's playing because yeah. there's so many. But you know playing international football, it, it brings you know a degree of experience with it, and so to have them girls bring that back and and bring that into the team, yeah, it, it's vital. Do those players? I mean, uh, this is a bit of a strange one because I can only I look at it from the men's point of view. But yeah. do those players? Are they happy that England won the Euros from one point of view because it helps the league and it helps the standing and it helps sell out every... I know you're yeah. still obviously going to have that bitterness yeah, yeah. towards England, but yeah. do they sort of feel it's a, it's been a good thing for the league, do you think? Yeah, I, I think so, you know. <laughs> deep down somewhere, obviously. <laughs> um, you know, Lisa Graham, I know the, she's obviously Scottish, so I know that she wasn't happy when they won it, but... Um, <laughs> You know they can't they can't complain because the 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 reaping the yeah. rewards of it themselves. So I'm sure they'll get over it if they're not already. <laughs> yeah, just going back to we some mentioned me there about the pitches and stuff. Seen a couple of things this week about um, things like boots and kit and things like that. That the 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 injuries some of the 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 users picking up. Mm -hmm. Is there something something you want to see? change as well in the game going forward be off the back of maybe that success um, where things like boots have to start being more catered to to yourselves because I've seen you picking up something like ACL injuries more, something like three times more often now than men, the men's really? game yeah that's, you know is, is that a struggle things like the kit and things like that is that, is that um, something that needs to change some yeah in ways I actually didn't know that there was a correlation yeah, yes. between you know boots and the ACLs everyone knows that ACLs are a really common injury yeah. and women's football and I don't know what you know more research needs to be done yeah. into that because it's it is a, a big issue um you know this is maybe isn't related but just on like boots and kit and stuff you know in the men's game if if you're a professional you you've got a sponsorship deal yeah. there's girls you know for example I'm not sponsored little plug there for anyone else. <laughs> no, I'm joking we'll see what we can do Cheers. <laughs> um no but like some girls are sponsored yeah. some girls aren't we shouldn't have to be paid for our own boots, yeah, you know. Um, so little things like that yeah. is where it, it still needs to be, yeah. you know, a lot better. I did see this week though that um, Nike put out the World Cup uh, advert, which yeah. is amazing. And there are 
quite a few uh, yeah. players from the women's game, yeah. which I think is really good, especially considering it is a it is focused at the World Cup, and yeah. to see those players and it does show you that you become a more marketable. I think well, that's the main thing, isn't yeah, it? Definitely. You become a more market. I know that's just like a you, you know it's a way, a way of looking in it, but that's important, oh, isn't it's it? Because yeah. Ronaldo's the most uh, marketable men's yeah. footballer, so if he's benefiting, why why not you know people from the women's game market? Yeah, exactly. I think. I switched on the Pride of Britain Awards the other night and I seen the Lionesses were on it and, you know, girls that I've grown up with were yeah. on it and I just thought, you know, fair play because, like you say, the the commercial deals and stuff that, mm. that come out of it, they're, they're life-changing yeah. for people. So, fair play to them. I milk it whilst they can. And we've obviously got Jill Scott in the jungle. That obviously in, one yeah. of your te ex-teammates as well. Yeah. That must be brilliant to see her. Is, is she coming across like like you know her? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> as, exactly as I expected. I thought, when I seen her going into it, I thought, oh, I hope she's not going to be shy because she's not, I, I've never known her to be shy and, and she's not at all. You know, I think yeah. day one she was dancing um, <laughs> and yeah, just cracking jokes. So hopefully she can go all the way. Um, hopefully. I'd love oh, to yeah, see yeah. her do a trial or something. <laughs> but um, yeah. Yeah, Keep it cool. away from the trials. That means people don't like it if you're doing the trials. <laughs> True, leave, yeah. leave that to other people in, in there. Um, so three o'clock, Manchester City. It's yeah. going to be a tough game. Obviously, this is sort of where we've fallen down this season, isn't yeah. it? The, the, those games, Chelsea, Manchester United. Yeah. Um, this is this is again. This is one where we sort of have to prove that we are amongst one of the, the better teams. Yeah, this is the next step for us. Like you say, when we play against the the top four, should we say? Mm. You know, we have to start closing that gap and, and taking points. I thought the Chelsea game, the, the result actually didn't reflect the game because I actually thought we played yeah. really well and we were unfortunate in that game. The United game, we, we didn't play well at all and that was that was deserved. But the key against these teams is to, is to stay in the game. Um, mm. They're obviously really good teams, but I think we actually prefer to play against these teams because they like to keep the ball and we like to yeah. keep the ball. So, you know, it'll come down to the fine margins on the day, but, you know, we're more than confident that we can take something from it. Brilliant, hopefully we can. It's sold out, so unfortunately you can't go. <laughs> but it's live on Sky. But there is a game in December against Durham in the Continental Cup that you can get your tickets for. So yeah. make sure you go down, back back the team. Um, it's a brilliant... I love I love that little ground. I just yeah. love, love Walton Hall Park. It's such a so brilliant nice. little... Yeah. Just a little throwback to uh, football, how yeah. it used to be. You go down, you can stand and you can watch the, the women's team play. So make sure you get down there and check it out. Megan, thank you for coming in and speaking to us. It's been thank great you. to speak to you. Thank you. And uh, make sure you check them out. Thank you for watching. We'll see you later.